Boom, people, welcome back to the show. Today, we're gonna talk about how Sycamore Partners and other private equity firms will go out and buy companies like Staples. And by the way, Sycamore Partners owns Aeropostal, Nine West, Hot Topic, and a handful of other businesses. <laughs> All are controlled by these large private equity companies. I'm, today, I'm gonna show you exactly how that works. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, click on that link or button below, whatever, subscribe, get notified by when we go live. If you wanna learn more, go to investmentfundseekers.com. You can see on our YouTube channel, other playlists where we talk about this type of stuff. Now, let's get into today about Sycamore Partners' acquisition of Staples for $6.9 billion. A little Trump right there. Billions and billions, billion and how they did it. Okay, so you guys have seen in our other videos how we talk about fund structure and private equity funds are no different. Structured like this, the general partner, limited partnership, the fund, limited partnership, okay? And limited partners, LPs up here, investors, will put money into the limited partnership and the general partner or the fund management will manage the limited partnership and they can go out and make acquisitions like Staples or Hot Topic or they actually were gonna buy Victoria's Secret but they canceled that one. Hot Topic, okay? That's what they're going, This at least this fund is going and buying that. That's the same structure they're using. Now something different in these types of buyouts is they aren't using just straight equity. What I mean by that is, it, is this, Sycamore Partners isn't going out and saying, hey, Staples is $6.9 billion. We need to raise $6.9 billion in our fund and go over and write a check and buy it. They do something called a leveraged buyout or LBO. You'll see this a lot in private equity. It's called a leveraged buyout. And I'm gonna walk you through exactly, first off, why they do it and secondly, how they do it. And the cool thing I love about, by the way, about the fund world, I think it's awesome. Sycamore Partners, if you look on, I think maybe I'll pop it up if you guys are watching the video, only 20 people work at Sycamore Partners. 20! And they manage all of these big businesses, 20 people work there. That's why I love the fund model, is so few people can control so much money and it makes you and me very wealthy to be fund managers. All right, so let's break it down, okay? So $6.9 billion, I do not know the exact numbers, but we're gonna use some round numbers here. I'm gonna show you the math of how this works, okay? So let's say, for example, they used, for this, $2 billion of equity, okay, from investors, and they could go out and raise $4.9 billion from a bank as a, essentially a loan. This is very similar to a mortgage. They put down a down payment of $2 billion, and they go get a mortgage or a loan from a bank, and they get to leverage their buyout from a bank. And let's say they borrow $4.9 billion. Let's say it's 6%, okay? And they probably are getting cheaper rates than that, especially if the Fed's dropped rates, I don't know, almost to zero right now. But let's just give them a bad rate and so let's say it's 6% on this LBO. 6% on $4.9 billion. Quick math here in my head, it's uh, 294, I just calculated that out, 290 more million dollars. They pay out every single year in interest to the bank to supply this leverage buyout. Now, terms of leverage buyouts are gonna change. Now, this is, I'm giving you a simple example. They might have stacked capital here, a whole mix of mezzanine loans and second position, lots of conglomerate that goes into this. But let's just keep it simple and say it's 4.9 at 6%. Okay, so why would they do this? I wanna give you an example. This is not the exact numbers of what's going on, but I wanna give you an example of how leverage works and applies for your purchase, your buyout. Okay, so let's say they did not use this leverage piece, $294 million. They just use cash and let's let's use round numbers here i looked at, i think uh, staples has about 18 billion dollars gross revenue every year let's say they take home net a billion dollars just for round numbers sake okay if they used all cash for this deal bought staples for 6.9 billion dollars and netted 1 billion dollars that would be 14.4% return okay not bad they can give that to their you know split that with their investors 80 20 whatever they're going to do okay that's okay. If they do the exact same deal, but use leverage, okay, they borrow 4.9 billion right here. They at 6% bad interest rate. They pay $294 million. So they're left with 706 million, okay, net. A little bit less money. Shoot, I'm, I got less money, but that's 706 million on their $2 billion investment, not the $6.9 billion investment. See where I'm going with here? So if you take 706 on $2 billion, 
their returns jump up from a 14.4% all the way to a 35.3%. Not bad. On the exact same deal, when you do a leverage buyout, you leverage your return, you usually get lot higher returns. Now, it is a little bit riskier though, because what if the company doesn't do well, right? What if they show like Staples has been showing losses for this last year? You are still stuck with a bill of $294 million, which you now have to come out of your pocket from your fund and pay back the bank that money. So that's where a little bit of risk comes in. So the same concept applies to real estate. The other things you can get a mortgage on a house. Even if you could pay cash, you get a mortgage, you leverage, should theoretically on paper make you more money. However, if you get in, get in a bind and default on your mortgage, they're gonna come take the house or the company from you, depending on your terms. Now, what do actual private equity funds do when they buy out these types of businesses? Now, there's a few things these PE funds will do, and there's a hundred or more of, of little niches in between here, shades of gray, you could call them. But typically, what's happening inside of here is Sycamore Partners will come in and do a, a number of things. They might come in and replace the entire management team, bring it under one roof. You, you can see Sycamore Partners owns a lot of, this is a little bit outside of their wheelhouse. They typically own clothing brands. Nine West, Hot Topic, they wanted to get Victoria's Secret, Aeropostale. Those companies all kind of have the same model and they will have similar managers over each one. They will sit on their board, make sure that they're running the business right and try to grow it, co combine it, make it more efficient. Those are all different ways improving the management team. The other thing they could do is split it apart. So sometimes they'll call private equity funds corporate raiders where they come in and instead of trying to grow staples, as this great company make it bigger and bigger, they come in and say, hey, Staples, you're going down anyways, so let's take off all the pieces and sell them separately. So we're gonna sell uh, all the real estate piece separately. We're gonna sell, you guys are good at selling printers. Okay, that division, printer division is gonna be a separate thing. Inside sales is gonna be a whole separate division sold off. And you, now some companies you can't do it as well. Some companies you can do it very well, but they will take a company, split it into pieces. They bought it for 6.9 billion, they believe the pieces will be worth more. Maybe they can sell the pieces individually for uh, you know, 7.8 billion, right? And they make their money on that spread. That's what they're doing there. Those are more corporate raider type of private equity firms that come in and will tear a company apart. Uh, sometimes they come in and take it through bankruptcy, restructure. I mean, there's a whole number of things that they have planned when they come in and buy out these businesses and take them over. So you'll see on the news, sometimes you'll see like the politicians get up and private equity funds are the scum of the earth and they're destroying businesses and companies. And sometimes they are, right? They're coming in, they're splitting up companies, they're, they're tearing apart, doing mergers with other companies and they're trying to seek yield. And they're incentivized to whatever makes us the most money, we're gonna do it. Whether that means tearing apart a company, whether that means building up a company, firing all the staff, hiring a new management team. Now this is where private equity funds make a name for themselves is how they come in and, and step in and transition. There's two different types of private equity funds that I see. You have active managed portfolios and passively managed portfolios. Sometimes they'll come in, Berkshire Hathaway is a great example, will come in and they buy uh, Heinz ketchup and or Coca-Cola. And sometimes they just wanna be a passive member and say, hey, you guys are already doing a great thing, just keep growing. We don't wanna step in and replace things, just we're gonna be a passive member but we got the money, we'll be a passive member and help you guys grow. See Apollo do this, K uh, KKR, I mean, it depends on their bio and on each, and each company, how they evaluate it. Now there's other ones where it's very active, where they step in and say, guys, this isn't being run right. I, I don't like how it's going, you're all fired. <laughs> We're gonna replace the, the executive team and step in. So hopefully that gives you a little overview of what's happening, Sycamore Partners buying staples, how a leveraged buyout works, how they still use this general partner, limited partnership structure to do this. Now, sometimes they'll set up an entity below there and that entity will buy Hot Topic or that entity will buy Stables, but it's all flowing up to the limited partnership, to the limited partners, the general partner, and then also their registered investment advisor, they have that as well. That's kind of the structure of what's going on the guts inside of a private equity fund. If you guys like this and want to hear more, go to our YouTube channel or listen to other podcasts. If you guys want to subscribe or hit other, we have playlists on there. We have a private equity playlist. We have a debt playlist, different fund structure playlists, how to raise capital, the whole nine yards. If you want to come on one of our weekly calls, I go to investmentfundsecrets.com. I do a live training every week. You guys can hop on and hear what's, what's going on, what my thoughts are. Do a live Q&A with me and get more in touch. I'd love to hear your guys' story, what you're doing, because there are surprisingly lots of entrepreneurs like you and me around the world going out and launching and starting funds. Just no one knows about it. So we're connecting everybody together, bringing it under one roof. We're the Wall Street Rebels. We're fighting those finance bros.
the sleek back, whatever you want to call them dudes that don't think what we're doing is possible and we're doing every day, single day. So thank you guys and I'll see you on the next episode. Peace.